hey, it's Mark Podolsky of The Land Geek with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's podcast, Scott Todd's taking the time off. The fellas and Taria are off. So it's just me and my guest, and you're going to love our guest, Jonathan Moore. Now, if you're not familiar with Jonathan, he has over 25 years of experience in North American and European capital markets focused on the natural resource industry. He has a history of achievement from his years with Canaccord Capital. In August 2008, he retired from Canaccord Capital as an investment advisor to apply his experience in contacts to the public company sector. He has successfully assembled multiple world-class companies, strengthened by strong management teams and multiple discoveries. We're going to learn all about precious metals with a precious guest, Jonathan Moore. Welcome. Hi, Mark. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. I'm so glad you're here. And um, let's just rewind the tape. And, you know, who wakes up and thinks of himself, boy, I want to learn about mining and precious metals. How does that happen? Good question, because geologists aren't generally the uh, the most uh, fun out of out of people. I mean, you can always see what a geologist looks like in the room when you just point at them. But um, no, but you know, I, I listen. My background: I, I was born and raised in Canada, and and the Canadian marketplace. When you get into the public markets, that is, and you know, being involved with the stock market, you know, being that's the definition of public market is let's just call it the stock market. You know, that's the place where a lot of these mining companies that we've seen, um, that's where they are incubated. This is where they start. This is where they go for their venture capital. It's the Silicon Valley of mining. And, uh, you know, Vancouver is being the kind of the junior uh, born, you know, that's that's kind of the, I hate to say it, but it's, 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 it's a... There's a lot of shady stuff comes out of Vancouver, and and and, and, and I'm and I'm going to say this with caution because when I'm talking mining and mining startup companies and and, and the mining space, you got to be very careful of what you're what you're going to invest in and what you're going to you know come across. Um, Vancouver historically has been a very um, it's been a town that has had a lot of scandals, and they've had some obviously big companies as well. But you know I have a famous saying, and you know in in New York, it's it's Wall Street. In Toronto, it's Bay Street. And in Vancouver, there's a street called Howe Street, which is the center of business. Well, Howe Street is the only street in the world that's shady on both sides. So just remember that. And, um, you know, it's uh, what I've learned to do over the years is, is basically identify very good projects um, from geologists that I re- trust and rely on. I'm a financial person, so I look more at the financial side. I take them public on the markets. And if you could have a really good geologist that's giving you a good product and good deal flow all the time, well, those are the things that you take to market and it increases your probabilities of having those big successes. And, and really that's that's what we rely on. So it's a team effort. And over the 25, 30 years that I've been in the business, I've been able to assemble a very, very good team of exactly that. Wow. Well, that's really good to know about Vancouver. <laughs> so <laughs> not to not to slag it, trust me, but it's it's a it's a um, it's it's a it's a bit of a Las Vegas casino up there at times, and be very careful. It's all I caution, uh, you know, uh, these these viewers. So when you, when you're doing your due diligence and you're looking for a project or a geologist, what what are you looking for? Like, how can we learn to be a better mining or uh, you know precious metal investor ourselves? Well, so really, you've got to rely on groups like me. So what I do is, you know, we first of all choose the commodity. Like, what do we, what do we see working here? What, are, what's our, what's our bandwidth here for the next ten years? That's our kind of horizon. We don't look and see what's hot right now. And, you know, by the time you fund it and take it to market, it's going to take you half a year anyway. So really, we're looking forward looking, and we see an opportunity right now in the resource space. Um, you know, when I use gold as my kind of temperature gauge for the whole market, you know, I'll put gold and silver in the same same category. These are metals that have, um, in times of uncertainty and inflation, like we were discussing, this is these are the assets that you want to own. Um, there's no more, you know, the first gold bar that was that was put onto the planet, uh, you know, how many years ago is still here today. So it's the, it's a store of wealth. We also look at other aspects. I mean, if you if you everybody's familiar with the battery. Um, with electric vehicles and the whole battery um, boom right now. Well, things like that. I mean, you're looking at lithium and, you know, copper, things like that, which which are also obviously 
you know, there's a huge demand for right, right now and very little supply. So depending on what you're looking for is what you're going to put to market. So we've, um, we've assembled a number in, in the spaces that I've just said from, from gold to silver to, to um, copper to zinc to lithium. And really what it comes down to is, is just having the right geologist at the right time. When a geologist looks at a project and he shows you something, it's great. But when a geologist looks at something and is so excited, he's spitting. And believe me, geologists never get excited over anything. When they're actually at that stage, that's something that then we look at. And then we deploy our own capital, our, you know, my personal uh, money, I'll, I'll put it together and then I'll formulate a team behind it. I then finance it take it to the market, and then we run the companies. And I'll go on as CEO, chairman, whatever it might be. And that's what you should be looking for, companies that have done the proper due diligence of getting these projects to market. They have the, you know, the big money behind them. You know, we've raised in excess of $500 million over the last 10, 15 years on, on our projects. So you, know, you want to get into situations where you have a chance and that have um, you know, uh, budgets behind them. They're drilling. They're actually trying to build out a resource if it's in what they're trying to find one. We very rarely touch grassroots, by the way. We like to find something that's already there and we like to build it and build it through, you know, through the development and into actually, you know, we're never going to get into production on our deals. We don't like that. We like to put it on a silver platter and then have a major come in and liquidate you. That's our that's our business model. Uh, okay. Okay. So if I understand this correctly, then you're looking for the the geologist who gets excited about the resource. And then you put in the money, the team, you bring it to market, and then you then exit to a larger company, let's say an Exxon. Well, who, I mean, it's, yeah. Do the, the, to do the, the, the work yeah. of the drilling. So this so is this, something, yeah. 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 Sorry. I, so I just want to just add here that this is something that people have to um, really pay attention to because you, the way I've always worked in my markets and the way I've made my money has always been in, you stick to what you're good at. And we're very good at building companies from ground floor or maybe have a discovery and then building it up, building up the reserve to a greater level. And then what we do is then we put it on a silver platter for a major, so a Newmont, Agnico Eagle Mining, Kinross, one of these major companies who do not do any exploration business themselves. They rely on companies like us to do this for them. Once we get to our level and it's at a level which is ready for a major to take, yes, that's your exit strategy is to liquidate the company to them. Um, it's very dangerous when you get someone like me who is good at that, which is building something up. When I start saying to you, I'm going to start taking this company into production, well, that's a whole different language. That's a different ball game. Just if I ever said that in, in any of my companies, you should probably sell every share you have because th there's nothing but failure there in my mind. You have to leave that heavy lifting for the big boys. And believe me, the, the returns you make from you know our business model of finding something, building it, putting it, you know, putting it out for sale, it's huge returns. And that's really our bread and butter. And I think um, I'm excited to tell people about it. So when you define huge returns, let's just talk about the risk reward ratio. Like, mm -hmm. tell us a story. Well, I mean, um, I mean, there's been several, but you know, there's there's um, you know, companies that we've been involved with is you know you 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 fund these things for you know say you put your first two million dollars in at uh, at ten cents. Okay. And then the market starts going and you have a company behind it and your market opens up and now you're 50 cents to 60 cents. Well, then you maybe raise, see another 10 million at a dollar. Okay. And the reason you're raising these funds is because you need the money to drill. That's the key word. Drilling creates value in the mining game. You have to prove out your reserves and your resource and, and your asset. Well, then you get it to a dollar. And then next thing you know, you've had some success. Well, then it goes to two dollars. You go to two fifty. In a in a boom time with the market, people are speculating in the mining game. Well, that you know two dollar value is probably going to be worth more like four dollars in value, and that's how the game is created. And what majors understand is that the more you drill and the more you prove up, your market cap is only going to get greater and greater and greater. So once they get to a level where you're comfortable enough and the major is comfortable enough that like they say, okay, this it's, it fits, ticks all the boxes. We've got the resources there, the tonnage, the grade, the environmental permits are all done. 
this thing's ready to go to production. And by the way, this company that this major might have a, a mill that's in the area or a, or a processing facility, well, then they will come and give you an offer. And that's, that's how the mining game works. That's, that's your, that's how the things, that's how majors operate. That's how the biggest discoveries in the world have, have been operated. You know, 40, 50 years ago, maybe even 20 years ago, majors did their own exploration and they actually had their own budgets. They would go do this type of drilling, but now they found it more of a benefit and more, it's more um, economic for these guys to rely on guys like us to, to do it for them. Well, I'm, I'm really glad that you're, you're taking the time to, to share this with more people because, you know, if you look at like a guy like a Peter Lynch, um, a famous investor, and he would say, you know, only buy what you know. So for example, if you're walking by Starbucks every day and you see there's a line out of Starbucks, oh, maybe I should research that as an investment to buy a Starbucks. But the average person's not thinking about precious metals, mining, and there's huge opportunity there. So it's, it's one of those things that's just not in our, our daily consciousness. But it should be because as we discussed, Inflation's at historic levels, and this is a, a time where fundamentally, if you go into inflation or even stagflation, what has been the best, out, what's outperformed every, every market? It's been gold, historically. So, and as you mentioned, you know, history repeats itself. What, is, what do investors need to know as far as, or to, to educate themselves as far as getting that comfortability that like, okay... Now I'm comfortable. I can put money here, and I and this is my risk reward ratio. You know, I think it's, you know, I know that theory, and I know you know, only own what you understand and what you know. Um, you know, that's that's fine and dandy, but if you're trying to create a well balanced portfolio, if you're trying to um, spread your dollars out and really just have exp- have you know just exposure to everything or trying to risk proof your portfolio whatever it might be whatever your investment horizons or your your whatever you want to do um, in times like right now everybody should have exposure to um, in my mind um, precious metals commodities whatever it might be um, you know when I you know, I can only lead by example. So, I mean, I'm not allowed to come out here and give investment advice. That's not what I do. I used to, but I, I don't do it anymore. I look after my own portfolio. So, you know, yes, we have exposures to, uh, you know, you know, tech stocks. Okay. Well, I don't own really hardly any tech stocks to what I owned about a year ago. I mean, it was, we had that massive run and, and you reallocate your portfolios and things constantly change. And, and, you know, we're always kind of moving things around. And, and again, this is my portfolio. Like most people just buy gross stocks and just, don't worry about it and just see at the finish line. And that's a great strategy. I mean, there's, there's no right or wrong on these, on these kind of discussions. Um, I just see a personal uh, from my homework and, and, you know, our expertise, which, which is quite substantial at that the cycles that we're seeing in the metals and mining market, they're in the early innings. We're in the f- end of the first beginning of the second inning on what we believe is a super cycle. And this super cycle, it's, these are the times which create huge wealth. These are the times which, um, you know, this is how you have, this is how you make fortunes. And, you know, I look at it a little differently. I look at it at times of when markets are booming and flying out of control and you see, you know, the Dow and the NASDAQ and the S&P are just skyrocketing. That's great. But the times where people historically have made the most millionaires in the world are times of uncertainty. It's when times actually are like this, when we're looking at Armageddon on the stock market, the Fed doesn't know which way it's which way is up. Well, yeah, they do. They know which way because they keep raising interest rates up. But you know that's a whole other conversation. But I think it's really this is when you get creative when times are uncertain, like we are in right now. This is the time where you can make good money. And are you going to make money on buying Netflix back or or Amazon back? Well, I'm probably going to bet against that. So really, a, we're seeing a secular move in, in in money flows, and I think we're going to start to see it flow into the into the mining and metal market quite quite substantially. Yeah, I I think you're 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 probably right, just based on um, the history of it, and you know, and 
you, to your point, like in times of uncertainty, people do flock to the safety of precious metals and they have a big run. I, I also agree with you that when there's blood in the street, right? What's that that Buffett saying? When 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 people are fearful, get greedy. And mm-hmm. when people are greedy, get fearful. And you know, it's such a an interesting cliche. And everybody thinks, oh, this is easy to do. It's not easy to do when you're living in it. And um, it takes courage and it takes a a risk tolerance to to be able to do that. But to your point, like that's where the fortunes are made in the you have to be bold. So go ahead, Jonathan. No, I mean, it's, 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 and it, it's not really that difficult. It's, it's just quite simply looking at your portfolio and just having exposure to sectors, which haven't had their run yet. I mean, every, every market, there's a bull market out there somewhere. I mean, it, that's, there's, there's always a bull market. Even if we're looking at a terrible U S stock market, there's, you're always going to find a bull market somewhere and just try to find it. And I think this is a place which people don't realize. And you, you mentioned it earlier, like how do you, this isn't something that people have been born with like myself. This is something which, you know, if you're born in America and you're, and you're an investor, this is probably one of the last places you're going to look is into the mining game, you know? And um, I think it's something which it gives me great comfort in telling someone right now at this stage of the game that this is, hey, listen, take a look seriously at this space because in three, four years from now, when you see these prices up here from where from where they were today, you're going to be saying, damn it, I should have listened to that guy. So if you're if you're new to the mining game, what's the best place to sort of educate yourself? And how would you, like if you, if, let's say you're talking to uh, your daughter who was 21 and she had, let's say $10,000 to get started. How, how would you tell her, okay, here's, here's where you need to start educating yourself on this. Well, I mean, you know, you got the internet, go look, whatever gold stocks, I mean, but really keeping it simple. Um, you know, everything in this market and today's pricing in my mind is, is, has, has been clocked. Everything has been decimated in price. So, Really, as an entry point into the market right now, um, I see a huge advantage. I think that's why it's always good to have cash on the sideline because you always want to be able to to pick up stocks. I mean, however, you know, if we said this a month ago, it looked cheap then, but it's come lower. So you never want to just blow it all into one purchase. You want to just take your time and and kind of dollar cost averages over over some time. But really, we're getting at levels now where prices are getting really cheap in my mind. All right. And that goes for the gold market too. I'm talking the NASDAQ. I'm talking every, everything's been, 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 been pulled back. That's just what happens when people raise interest rates, the stock market falls. Um, we've also seen a US dollar, which has gone completely skyrocketing, like straight up. And that is it, that plays a downward effect on commodities because commodities and metals and mining oil, whatever it might be, they're all quoted in US bucks. Um, so really, if you're, if, you're, if you're coming at it and you really want to learn, well, I, okay, you, you want exposure to gold. Well, I think the best place to start is what are the largest gold companies in the world? Where's, 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 like, let's look at the market cap of these companies. Let's look and see where they are today. Let's look and see where they were a year ago. Well, you're going to find that these things are all at their 52-week lows. Um, I love that opportunity with what's coming up. Um, so the Igniko Eagles is one of my big picks, Newmont Mining, um, uh, you know, Barrick, whatever it might be. These are the big, big, big gold companies. If you don't want to be that specific, then you go and look at gold ETFs, um, things that trade in the market, which is the basket of goods, which trade like a stock, but it's like a, something you buy and they have exposure to, you know, to a number of different um, you know, aspects in, you know, in the company, whatever that ETF is made of. Uh, if you like silver, same way, you do it the same thing. You do it, you know, exactly the same way. If you want lithium, well, there's lithium companies out there. So, so really, it's it's really a question of what you think, what you believe in. Is your exposure for? Do you want to protect and just put money aside because you're worried about inflation and the Fed continuing to do what they're doing, which is you know, completely the wrong move all throughout all these years. And so that means in that case, if that's your philosophy, then you want to probably stick on the gold side. Um, the, you know, you can get on, you know, there's other things, copper, there's zinc, there's, it's, it's endless. Um, personally, I play all of them. Um, and then to take it a step further, once I have my majors chosen, I will then take 
a little bit more risk into my portfolio and start to look at you know the mid cap companies or small cap companies because in a booming market for commodity and for metals and mining when we have a gold price that's skyrocketing then all of these companies rise at the same time and so you want to have a lot of leverage so you know buying a stock at 50 cents it might have made the discovery but they're developing it you buy it these these give you the most leverage out of all of them and i think we're about to hit that kind of point coming up very sh- very soon as soon as we kind of get back into a, an uptrend on the gold market i think people are going to start to speculate again okay um last question before we get to the tip of the week what does it mean to be a fully funded ongoing drill program so that means, um, remember I said to everybody, I said, you want to make sure companies are drilling because that's the only way that you can bring value to a company that's growing. And that's important. That's what that's what we do. We like to put things together. And then once we start drilling, we don't want to stop. We want to keep going. Sure, you might take a stop and you have to, you know, look at some geophysics differently or, or you know, we have to move a drill rig over here or just logistically, you might have to change something. But you want to make sure that what you're investing in is it's not like somebody that, okay, I'm going to go drill 5,000 meters here this summer. Okay. Okay. Drilling's finished. Let's wait for our results. And then, you know, you're going back, you know, you suddenly it's the, it's, it's, the, it's the end of the summer. Well, the next drill program set for the following spring. Well, what's the point? I mean, what, what happens from the end of the end of summer to the next spring? Well, really there's no value added coming into your company. So you want to make sure that, we are like all like my, all my companies. We we generally like to drill 24 seven, 12 months of the year, nonstop, and that just you know. And the reason why we're able to do that is we're able to raise substantial amounts of money on our projects from the good geologists from these good projects because they, they, you know, they let's just say they qualify. You know, if you have a bad project, you're not going to drill it all the time. But if we have good projects, we can drill them and drill them out. Okay. Well, this has been fascinating. And your mentorship as far as mining precious metals has been invaluable. But now we are at that point in the podcast, Jonathan, where we, I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the Auto Passive Income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? I just got a book and I got it for Father's Day and I'm suddenly just picking it up now. Um, it's a health book and it's actually been... It's just, I mean, I listen. I'm I'm 47 in three months. I, you know, I'm I'm I, I live very healthy. I, I'm quite fit, but I'm getting to the age now where I'm starting to worry about you know health a little bit and just making sure that I'm I'm going to make it. I've got two kids as well, so I want to be around for a long time. But it's a the new Tony Robbins book, and I am going through it, and I love it. And I have to sorry, just do this, Taylor. What's the name of that book? Life. I'm going to get it to my wife's right here. And I'm going to tell you the tip on this book, but I started reading this thing and I love it. And it's giving me just a lot of, it's just self comfort awareness. It's just giving me the right, um, it just puts me in a right frame of mind. And uh, I'll have the name of this book here shortly. Actually, is it in my bag here? No, it's coming. It's called Life force by tony robbins there you go sorry it took me so long but it was uh, it was it was sitting in my bedroom uh that is my tip i just i think it's a book that everybody should look at health is important and you know i wouldn't be doing what i would be doing if i wasn't healthy so there you have it yeah I, yeah I'll, I'll have to check that out i have not heard of that book is that it must be new it's new yeah actually got it right here just came out there and i'm is. not pro- and i'm not promoting it i don't know tony robbins if uh, from, you know, at all. So I've never met the guy, but it's a great book. All right. Well, uh, I'll definitely be checking it out. I, I love that. Uh, I think it's Confucius. It says uh, a healthy man wants, you know, a thousand different things, but a sick man only wants one. So well said. it's, you know, it's so true. Well, my tip of the week is learn how you can diversify your portfolio, uh, protect yourself against inflation and learn more about the mining game. Go to star. And that's with two R's, peakminingltd.com. We will have a link to the website, starpeakmininglimited.com. Jonathan Moore, are we good? We're good. I you know, always like talking rocks. I'm sorry if it bored some people, but I try to make it as interesting as possible. And uh, it's, uh, listen, just, just pay attention to these markets, people. Don't be scared by them. 
just realize this is the time where people can make very good money. You just got to be strategic and just stand by it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, is there anything I should have asked you I didn't ask you? You know, life is good. So, you know, good luck to everyone out there. And, you know, I, uh, you know, if you, if you need me back, just, just let me know when. All right. Well, I want to thank you. I want to thank the listeners and remind them the only way, the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like a Jonathan Moore is if you do us three little favors, you got to uh, follow, rate, review the podcast, send a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you a free signed copy of Dirt Rich. And if you want to learn more about passive income, schedule a call, go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training and learn how flight school can really make a huge move, the, make a huge difference in your life, move the needle, start building that passive income quickly, safely, and efficiently with Scott Todd as your Sherpa and uh, schedule a call. So uh, Jonathan, I always end this silly way. I go one, two, three, let freedom ring. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.